You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May. So, hey, everybody, this is Curtis May here. I want to welcome you to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. I, I'm really excited. I have a good friend of mine and a special guest, uh, Miss Nicole Purvey. So we're going to talk about two things today. Nicole has a great book out called The Anti-Hustle, which I love. And I've seen a lot of people wear, this, wear her, the Anti-Hustle t-shirts on. Is start a six-figure business in one year, which she was able to do. We're going to talk about real estate because she's created a great group of, I'm a part of, called the Better Than Success League. So I want to talk about both of those today. Nicole, say hi to my listeners out there. Hello, listeners. How are you guys? We are great. So, Good. Nicole, we want you to, you know, so Nicole thinks I am, knows, or I'm going to tell her on right here for everybody to know that she is brilliant. All right. Oh, thank you. I literally, for a half a second, I was like, who are we talking about? Right. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. She's thank a you. brilliant businesswoman. She's, you know, I've seen her like just print money out of thin air, just create stuff. You know, there was no, Philly real estate week before she brainstormed it and just just stuff. And so let's start with this because one of the conversations we had, remember that time we were in the meeting, because the good talk is after the meeting after the meeting, right? So we're talking right. to a friend of yours and we were you were. I was just listening. I might chime in every now and then. So I don't need to talk most of the time, folks. So sometimes you gotta God gave you two eyes, two ears and one mouth, so you can look and listen twice as much as you talk. So I try to practice that, <laughs> but she was telling this friend how oh, money, making money is easy. It wasn't always easy for you, but before let's, so let's talk about that and then bring them up to us as I can go over your bio, kind of what you got you to where you started, you know, two minute synopsis and, and then let's talk about that. Bring them up to where you are today and, and tell them of your brilliance from what it was birthed. So you want the two minute version. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for eight years mm -hmm. and almost nine. Woo. Oh my goodness. Um, mm -hmm. And I have uh, currently I've run the better than success real estate league. Mm -hmm. um, we do, we invest together. We learn together. I'm also a real estate investor. We do also the be better than success. We do large events. We do the women in real estate summit. Philly Real Estate Week. I also run a commercial mortgage brokerage, mm -hmm. BTS funding. So if anyone needs to get financing to do their real estate deals, actually, we're about to send out an email blast in a few, mm -hmm. a really great deal in West Philly where to get financing to do this deal, all you need to come to closing with is $19,500. And mm -hmm. then we will front you the money. Our, our partners will front you the money for the rest. Those are some of the things that I do. What did you do before that? So you had another company. When I met you, you had another company. And right. Then, so you, what she says is happening within like 18 months. Okay. I just want you to understand <laughs> the power of what? this woman that's talking to you. All right. <laughs> so the crazy thing is when you met me, I had just, we just started the real estate league uh -huh. um, probably like three months prior uh -huh. to that. Cause I, you and I met in January. We started, well, two months. We started the real estate league in November. And I really didn't become a real estate investor until almost a year after. So we, I ran the real estate club, like just like, hey, I don't know nothing about real estate. I want to learn. Whoever want to come learn with me. Right. So I ran a real estate club for a year before I started actually investing. Mm -hmm. But before I did that, I owned a web design business I, I, that really was provided the seed for a lot of stuff that we do. Mm -hmm. um, we worked with large clients. We worked with Comcast, Philadelphia Federation of Teachers. Uh, Scholastic. We worked with some pretty large companies and we did that for quite some time. And then in June, I, I hung it up. I, I, I literally started hating it. But <laughs> in June, I, I just I stopped doing it. So, I, But I'm very, very, very overly, extremely thankful for my experience doing that. It taught me a whole lot, like a whole, whole, whole lot. So that, about running right. a business and, and, you know, making stuff happen. Right. Fast forward to our conversation. Making money is easy. Making money is easy. So mostly anything with the exception of like some real hardcore training, physical training for athletes. A, a, a lot of stuff is actually technically easy. The difficult part is the mindset part. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the most difficult part of anything. So anytime I ever try to do anything, if I'm if I ever tried to 
attain a goal or I set a goal for myself, I spend 90% of the time in the first phases, like working on my mindset and like really, really, really trying to get my mind right. Making money is easy. The solution is simply bring an overabundance of value, like overabundance of value, like so much value to the point where you look at the end buyer is like, you're getting a steal. Like you're mm-hmm. getting over. Mm-hmm. That's how you mm-hmm. make money. That's how you ensure that you make money. Mm-hmm. You have to bring an overabundance of value. Like so, you're a part of our real estate league. You know, you, you come to our Wednesday night, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You don't even, and, and you, and you appreciate that. You don't even take advantage and that's okay. Cause we do a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. But you don't even take advantage of everything that we have to offer. Not yet. Right. <laughs> but she does. They, they have a lot. I mean, I've referred my sister, I have a lot of people of my clients that, that I'm sending down there because she brings such value. And see, so value bomb number one is, you know, what I always talk about on this show, your income is in direct proportion to the value that you bring to the marketplace. Mm-hmm. So you need to focus on being more valuable. Yeah. I mean, that, that goes with anything that goes with any of your friendships, your relationships, like, you got to be okay with just being the person on the, the end of the stick where you're just giving more value. Like you have to be okay with that. A lot of us, a lot of people walk around and they're like, well, I'm not doing that because this person isn't doing this or I'm not doing it. Like any job that I've ever had, even when I worked in corporate America, you know, I used to be a bond trader. I worked with some large fortune 500 companies. I've always had jobs that I really didn't, that wasn't qualified for initially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then quickly got a lot of recognition because I just always over delivered on value that's just this the person that i am mm-hmm. right like i'm going to go above and beyond just because it's just that's just that's just how i am right. unless it's something that i absolutely hate doing like i knew i had to stop doing websites when like <laughs> i was so over it like right you know you really don't like doing this so you have to stop <laughs> right but, and, that, and you know it's funny that takes courage yeah it's it, it, honestly it was in the works for a year it took me a long time to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm finally say okay I'm gonna do this and then when I did finally say okay I was going to do it I had to give myself a deadline mm-hmm. and then that day like I had I came into the office swinging axes like this is what I have to do I don't want to do it but I have to do it <laughs> it's scary I remember we were we were selling our family business and it took me two years to come to a decision that I, I can't do this I don't not can't I don't like it enough to do this and I had to let it go once I made the decision I was at peace and I was just a weight lift off my shoulder but it took me a long time to come mm-hmm. to the decision decision to shut down our, our our bars because I always tell people you know the gray hair I have came from the bar business I ain't had no gray hair before that <laughs> <laughs> I can that just sounds stressful to me yes so yeah I can Imagine. So you had to plan on you're going to be at Rod at gunpoint three times a year, you know, because they were both in North Philly. Jeez, I, was, yeah. I was about to ask you, where were they? Yeah, they're in North Philly. So I was like, look, give them the money. You know, money, we can make more money. Your life is not worth money. Don't give them, don't volunteer. Well, here's the change bag. You know, just give them the money. <laughs> just give them what they ask <laughs> for. Give what they ask for. Put, you know, and every hour you dump the money in the safe, you know. Oh, wait, you forgot this. Don't, don't do that. But... <laughs> So that literally what yeah. happened to you guys? You, you guys would get robbed three times a year? Yes, yes. Jeez, we. We had two. So that's like, you know, anywhere from three to five times a year between the two places we would get robbed at gunpoint. That is crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's retail. So, you know, I grew up in retail business. So when people tell me, you know, you got to be there, you're, you know, my, my dad used to say, listen, your store has got to be open. So I kind of, when I got into, you know, my, well, I was always in my financial services business. I started this at 20, but I was, we were do stuff together and said, listen, your store has to be open. So, you know, so I would ask myself, is my store open? Did I work today? I'll talk to people in the league and I'll say, well, you know, what did you do today? To, to grow your business, you know, and, you know, and I tell them this store, I say, so was your store open today? Was your real estate store open today? And most times right. it's not. They're not really, most people don't know how to work. They have a, they're, you know, I, one of the things I appreciate is like y'all do, one of the things she does with people in the league is they'll do one-on-ones where you sit down and kind of um, map out their. Yeah. Their, and that, that, and it, the reason that we started doing that is for that very reason, like we, mm-hmm. I, I saw that people didn't really know how to, like, I can give you all this information, but if you don't know how to piece it together, if you don't yeah. know how to put the pieces of the puzzle together mm-hmm. and make it applicable to you, then it means absolutely nothing. Take me through that. So let's say I'm, I'm listening to this and I'm, um, you know, think I want to build a 
real estate business. I want to generate passive income. What thought process do you walk people through if you can do that's that? A really diff- that's a really difficult question. So okay. in terms of our league, from an automated standpoint, the first thing that we teach them is they watch a couple, they get a, a barrage. Well, email, all right, talk, barrage about that. talk about that process because it, a lot of it is automated, but that's a good example. Go ahead. Yeah, because, uh, because, so remember, we're a real estate club, right? Mm-hmm. I try to be very clear, like, as long as I'm running the real estate club, we always want to focus on education, mm-hmm. but we're a real estate club that doesn't obligate us to give education. Like if you are a part of a cigar club, you know, they're not obligated to educate you on cigars, right? right. Here's how you grow it. Here's how you wrap it. Right, right. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's not what they're doing. There. Right. But it's a cigar club for people who are cigar aficionados to come and enjoy themselves and network with people of like mind. So mm-hmm. that is what we do. But because I like to over deliver in value, we give a lot of education. Mm-hmm. So what people doing it, we're, we're constantly tweaking it. When people first join, they get access to a lot of curriculum. But in order for them to be able to at least put some of that curriculum in contact, mm-hmm. we have a new members class that we have recorded on the back office mm-hmm. that teaches you how to tell if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal. Well, mm-hmm. first things first, we talk about like the league, like what, what we do so that people really fully understand what it is that we at the Better Than Success Real Estate League do. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about how to determine your right path for real estate. So we have three different tracks. One of them involves being a wholesaler. The next one involves actually investing and finding your best investment strategy and finding partners, um, like someone to partner up with. And the other one is just really about building your brand. Mm-hmm. if you're an advanced investor. So we talk about that. And then the next thing we talk about is how to tell if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal. Like we go through some one-on-one stuff so that new investors can come into the league and really understand the conversation that's mm-hmm. going on. So mm-hmm. we talk about how to tell if a deal is a good deal or a bad deal, um, real estate math. We also go over some definitions, right? If you're a new investor, some of these things may go over your head. And oftentimes we've had people who own two or three rental properties and there are certain definitions that they don't know what it means. Right. So these conversations. Right. And these, they just did it by through heart and just force of nature. I'm going to make this right. happen. But they don't have, right. you know, what's cash or cash return? What? Right. what does that mean? You know what I mean? They don't know that yet, but that's all right. Cause you have the ability to take action. You know, I, I'd rather take you, you know, over somebody that wants to study all the time. You know, <laughs> so. Right. Exactly. So we, we tried to give them some, some course, like initially, something to do to help them gain some content, content mm-hmm. in terms of navigating the lead. So then after that, the thing that I would tell everybody to focus on is you have to focus on the networking part. Like we give a lot of information, you know, we record all of our meetings. So as soon as you become a member, you get access to hundreds of hours of content init- instantly, mm-hmm. hundreds of hours of content, our past meetings, everything. But the thing that really helps people to actually get investing going quicker is when they actually network and they make their face known, they make their self known. I would love to say that it's something else, but it's really, it's really all about the networking. And there's not too many places and there's not too many places in general where people of like minds come together and you can just like instantly, if you have, especially even if you have a real estate service business, right? Mm-hmm. So your business is a real estate service business. Like, I don't need to know any numbers. I, I really don't care. But you instantly came in and, and got new clients. Me? Correct? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, because I can. I'm a service provider. I mean, we have. Uh, but you, you know, came in and networked. Yeah, I networked. It's right. all about so your network equals involved. your net worth. I mean, that's a saying. Or you know, rich. Everybody looks for work. Rich people build networks. That you know, I got a paraphrase from Robert Kiyosaki. But yeah, absolutely. And it's been. It's really who you know. I've met some really smart people. Uh, like yourself that I've learned a lot from and I've actually, you know, but I got clients because I, like you, I try to bring value and over deliver. You know, it, it, I try to tell everybody that they have to be involved. I don't yeah. like to put that pressure on like you have to network because some people are introverts and the, the thought of networking terrifies them. Like me, I'm, I'm really an introvert. Mm-hmm. I know I like being in, on a stage Mm-hmm. Right? right, and I like serving. I wouldn't have guessed, really. No, <laughs> but I <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I like being on the stage. I like serving people. But like, if you put me in a room, like to say, go to this networking event, I will sit in the corner of the room. Like, I can't. I don't yeah. particularly. Like you know, it's funny. I am the exact same way. I'm. A, I can be extroverted on demand. 
but I'm right. not like, hey, how you doing? It's Curtis, da da da. You know, because I it's a it's definitely a switch I've learned to cut on. But and then when it's time to cut off, I'm exhausted. I don't feel like talking to nobody after that. <laughs> so, right, exactly. Right. Like I I just I'm, I just have no. I just have no interest in talking to a bunch of random strangers right. that I don't know. Like, I, I, I just don't. Or about BS, you know, about, right. you know, let's talk about making money. Let's talk about, and, and so people say to you dumb stuff, like, oh, you know, all you do is think about real estate. All you do is think about your business. Like, yes, that's why, I, that wearing that shirt I wore, I never see you at parties, and I say I never see you at the bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because I'm working. Damn it, my store is open. Right, Right. exactly. That's and, the truth. I like that. It's your store open. I like that. My store is not open. My real estate store, I'm focused on the league a lot. Yeah. So I like have to intentionally open my real estate yeah, store Yeah, but every your day. store is open because your business is your store. Right. That's the truth. No, the business is absolutely. But in terms yeah. of like some of the bigger development projects that I want to work on, I don't mm-hmm. get to work on it every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're because, speaking of which you just started one. Talk about that for a second. Because I want to give you the idea of the scope of stuff you're doing. Jumpstart. Jump start. Um, this is for so, a if you're listening. This is in Philadelphia. Because I got listeners yeah. not in Philly. But yeah, yeah this so is this, is a, this is in Philadelphia, which is a great so, uh, market for developing stuff. That's the truth. We have a lot of people who um, come from outside of the city, come and invest here because it's a great market. Mm-hmm. But my mentor, Ken Weinstein, he started a program called Jumpstart Germantown. He's a big mm-hmm. developer and he focuses on the Germantown part of Philadelphia. And people kept coming to him and asking him to mentor. So he said, he just, long story short, he put together a curriculum. Mm-hmm. So he made the curriculum open source and he gave us the green light to start a Jumpstart Omni program. So we're just integrating the curriculum into our real estate league mm-hmm. because it's, it's, it's a very well-documented curriculum. And there's a couple of tweaks that I need to customize to make it applicable to better than successful real estate league members. Mm-hmm. But we're focusing on that. I, in terms of development projects, I'm actually about to start doing my first new construction. My wow, very okay. first new construction project. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited about that. I'm working on two rehabs right now. And um, I'm, I'm not like... So this is 18 person. months in to your, to your investing career. A year. Yeah, a I year. I, yeah, I guess that is kind of... Mm-hmm. I never thought about it like that. And then I'm about to close on another project. Yeah, actually, we're just texting. I'm, I'm about to buy another project. Um, I'm closing on next Monday. Because here's the thing: would you? I would. I say, and so I'm I did jump at, in and take action, though. That's the thing. Well, you took action. You 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 wanted to learn, so you created a network, an environment where you could learn and get around people that were doing it, and then you that kind of sucked you into it. But you were in t- to me when I look at it from the outside. That's what I see. Yeah, well, yes, that is correct. That is 100% correct. I'll, I'll tell you from the inside how, and from the outside is probably a more accurate depiction, but I'll tell you how it felt from the inside okay. in terms of whether I jumped in or not. So we started, so we started the Real Estate League November. We, we were going under a different name. We, we had to reorganize in May of 2017. Yeah, so I November remember that. 2016, yeah, I remember right, that. November of 2016, we started the Real Estate League by maybe like May when we reorged under better than successful. But this was league. better because it was your intellectual content. It's my brand. Virtual. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Around that time, I was ready to do a deal. Mm-hmm. I like finally, like I got enough information, six months worth of information, education, running the league. And I was like, okay, now I'm ready to go. Now I do want to say six months is not like, it's not standard. I'm not saying it's short, long, doesn't matter. Everybody's different. We have some people who come into the league and do a, their first deal in 30 days. Yep. We have some people who come into the league. We have one member. Um, he's amazing. He's like one of our, like he comes every single week and he's two years in. He hasn't done a deal because he's focusing on, he had a lot of groundwork that he needed to fix, like mm-hmm. some credit stuff, some savings, some other things that he needed to switch to, to uh, shift in his life. Mm-hmm. So I say that to say like, I don't want anybody to think like six months is the time I should be starting. No, it doesn't work that way. Right. So six months in, I was ready. And then, Long story short, I just I, I I couldn't pull the trigger on anything, and I and I started to get really frustrated, and I'm like, how now? Like the league, it started out as just me just running like a club with me and my friend, and right. it's just like learning, and then it grew into a thing. Like now I'm running this league, and I'm like, I, I started feeling really bad. Like I'm running the league, and nobody, like I, how am I not going to have any deals done? And I started to feel like my confidence was right. shot. I don't want right. to say not my confidence, but I was. It's it like what it called really it, 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 about it. syndrome, right? It's like, wait a minute, how right. am I, uh, I'm a real right. estate agent, but I don't own a house. <laughs> right, right. And then you know what? 
God said to me, very blatant, like very blatant. I wish I just remember the exact moment, but I remember it was like a light bulb switch. And God said to me, don't worry, focus on helping other people do deals first in the league. Focus on them first. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after that, maybe, so then maybe another, so from no, the middle of the year, which was it, that was May, like around May, June, Mm -hmm. um, all the way up until November, we did our first deal, pulled our money together, did our first deal as a group. Mm-hmm. It was November of last year, flipped that. But in the meantime, like literally people started throwing money at it. And then all these deals started falling into place. And, you know, we're starting to do Philly Real Estate Week. And I guess people were like, oh, she's I need to take her seriously. Yeah. So then, yep. yeah, people just started throwing money See, at it. Because you became the hub. Right. And then you I know, did wholesale. Then I did like yeah. wholesale deals back to back to back. And I uh, hadn't done one in like, I, like I had never done one for a long time behind running the league. Right. And then now it's just like, See, because what people don't do is they don't give their efforts time to compound. And, um, yeah. and they're, they're looking. So everybody says they don't want to get rich quick. But when you sit down with them, they really do. And so one of the things I see and what I think I bring to the league is that, listen, you know, here's one of the things. My, my father told me like a couple of core things. You know, is your store open? He would say, listen. You'll never make any money work with somebody else. Now that, you know, he grew up self-employed. My grandfather was self-employed. So I kind of got that message, but everybody doesn't, should not be in business. So hear me, don't go out and quit your job yet. Just yet. Don't jump out of a <laughs> airplane without a parachute. But the other thing he used to say was it takes, and I've heard this from the time I was seven, it takes three to five years to build a business. Mm-hmm. Like a re- you know what I mean? And so what mm-hmm. people, oh, I'm in a year, I'm in this and that. I mean, really right now you're still a startup, right? And you're just beginning. And it'll become more profitable, more efficient because you're always working on your game. I call it as an old basketball player. I'm always working on my game or working on your business so that it'll become even more profitable. Because if you really look at it, you know, when you look at the Forbes 400, what do they do? They build businesses and then they buy real estate, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like right jab, left jab. You know, you do both. The other thing I see, and I want to shift gears. I want to talk about the book a little bit, so I'm prepping you for that. But that's that's what I see. And so as you hear Nikki's story, I want you to to see that, look, she didn't come from this stuff. She took action. See, most people don't have the heart to take action. I want to draw out some, some, some things I see within your story. And then she learned and she focused on creating value in the marketplace. And now... That's a book out called Becoming a Go-Giver. So she, if you know her, she's a giver, but givers get. And that's, mm. you know what I mean? And so let's talk about your definition of hustling and let's talk a little bit about the, uh, I know you had a course coming up also, you know what you talk about, but mm-hmm. uh, a little bit about the book and the what, what the idea from the book and the, the uh, anti-hustle over the next few minutes as we uh, uh, start to wind down. So um, the book, The Anti-Hustle, came about like, just after me, I just hate the, the term hustling. Like, I'm, I'm not a hustler. I, don't, I never heard Warren Buffett say he was a hustler. Right. I never heard Steve Jobs <laughs> say he was a hustler. Like, never. Uh, and the people that say that they're hustlers, I don't want to be like them. Right. Like, I just, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I don't like how people glorify the term. Right. Those people are in business. They ain't in business. They in business. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'm exactly. a business man. I got to keep moving all the time. All right. Man. Exactly. Exactly. Right. That's a Philly and thing. So I, <laughs> <laughs> all you listeners outside of Philly. Uh, anyway, that's a yeah. So you'll stay on the hustle thing. So we're silly. I'm silly. So I can't. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> so I, I came up with this term, the anti-hustle, and I, and I started just kind of using it mm-hmm. throughout some of our marketing and and some of the things. Like you have to be intentional. It's not about doing hot, rushed, busy work. Mm-hmm. Right, if you look at the definition of hustling, hustling, you can, if you want to look at the street definition, the most positive definition is, is, is that someone who's doing rushed, busy work. Mm. Or if you look at the real definition is someone who wants to swindle you. And I don't mm. ever want to be like, I don't, I don't want to sell somebody something that they don't need. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, Which it's most really all about sales is trying to convince people to buy something they don't something want they or don't need. need. No, I don't yeah. listen. You, you've been to our meetings when we do our real estate, when we have our meetings and at the end, I ask non members to come up so I can tell them about the league. Mm-hmm. Like I just tell you about the league. And if you don't want to join, I'm not like, I don't, pr- I don't, this is not a high pressure sales situation. You want to like, I don't, first of all, I don't want you to join if you're not ready because right. I don't want you to make the, the commitment 
and you're not ready to like invest in real estate. Right. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want no part. I don't yeah. want no parts in it. I want people who like ready to at least work on changing their mindset and their life. Yep. Sometimes you're not ready. Like there's been times when people have given me really great advice about something I need to do. And I turn to them and say, you know what? That's really great advice. I'm not ready to do that yet. <laughs> like, I'm right. just not ready right. to do that yet. And that's okay. Right. That's right. It's, it's self-aware just to understand that, you know, and it's the same when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Right. Exactly. The anti-hustle is really all about not stressing, like working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us, when we are faced with some sort of problem or we feel like we need to grow our business, we just go extra hard into overtime and killing ourselves. And mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. So the anti-hustle was a Christian business book, right? And I didn't set out to be, have it be that way. I, I started I, I started kind of writing it maybe two years prior to publishing it. I was like making notes separately. I knew I was going to end up writing a book at some point. And then when I finally sat down to write it, everything I wanted to reference and everything, every point that I wanted to reference was based on some spiritual principle. Mm -hmm. So that's what ended up coming out at the end of the six weeks. Like I shut down, I sh shut down the office for six weeks and just wrote the book. That's what ended up happening. And as a result, the anti-hustle is, is really grace, which we don't talk about enough. And it's really the foundation for Christianity. Uh, and, not and it's nowhere right. near enough. And the Bible is like stories around money. And so people that profess to love the Bible, they miss all these lessons. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible talks more about money outside of the kingdom yep. than any other topic. Yep. Yep. I, yep. I just read uh, this, some book that I have. Um, says that there's like a thousand scriptures on money. And there's other, our Jewish friends who just read the, the Torah, what we would call the Old Testament. They, I have this book called, uh, by Rabbi Lapp called Thou Shalt Prosper. And I was telling his pastor, I said, look, you know, they're reading the same Old Testament we are. And we- mean something totally different now. Yeah, it. completely. Because we're, we're so scared to talk about money. Yeah, yeah. And, but the thing about it is the money is the lesser, right? Yep. Like, yep. it's not even really that big a deal. Right. And that's why I say making money. And the only way to make it is because people are making value for others. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's why I say making money is easy because people put money on this pedestal. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tool. Like that's really all it is. It's yeah. just a tool. See, so it starts out with your, you know, Jim Rome used to say, I'm a big Jim Rome fan. People know, listen, know that most people don't have a money problem. They have a philosophy problem. Right. And so most people have a, scarcity philosophy so it's like a zero sum so if i win you have to lose right okay. what if you have a, a prosperity mindset first you got to think from a prosperous standpoint like you do and you understand there's more than enough for everybody to have more than enough and see so that's why you can give because you have a philosophy of prosperity and right. it's, it's not like you know their wealth has to be created before it can be divided or distributed and you can't redistribute it that's theft Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Galvin modeled in my libertarian rants. Yes, I know. <laughs> that is so, <laughs> uh, so listen, I, wanna, I want to, so tell them, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get the book? If they want to visit uh, your, you know, the, if, they're, if you're local to the Tri-State area, if you want to, because we have people coming from Jersey, from Delaware, from PA to the league, and it's a great uh, group of people that are very giving, and you learn a lot. She gets great guest speakers. Um, how would they find out more about? So you can, uh, if you want to find out more about us, you can definitely visit the website, betterthansuccess.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to find specifically about the real estate league, go to better than success.com forward slash B T S R E L. And that stands for better than success real estate league. So B T S R E L better than success.com forward slash B T S R E L. Mm -hmm. If you want to find out more about the book, you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it directly from my site at the anti hustle book.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at Nicole Kirby and I C O L E P. You are B as in Victor. Why? Awesome. So she is definitely one to stay in touch with and to follow her. If you're local, come visit us because I'm there usually every week also. Folks, this is, I'm really excited to uh, finally get her on my show. And um, she's just really 
a ball of fire. So I oh, just want to thank just, you. I just want to be in proximity. So maybe a closing words of wisdom for our listeners to take them home of uh, that they should be thinking about or. This is what I want to say. I, I open my book with this quote, and I say this quote all the time. My dad put me onto this quote. Don't trip over dollars to pick up pennies. Mm -hmm. Some of us business owners, when we start in our businesses, we don't take the time to build a good foundation. Don't take the time to set up good systems because we're trying to pick up pennies. If you, by avoiding the systems and avoiding a good foundation and not providing value, undeniable value, those are, those are the dollars, right? Yep. Sometimes you might have to forego some pennies today so you can have some dollars tomorrow because we talk about my Christian business book and oh, my class coming up. I'm teach the book in a two day master class yes. on yes. January 19th and the 20th mm -hmm. um, here in Philadelphia, two, four hour sessions from 11 to 3 PM. Uh, I'm going to teach the book, like give you guys some hands on stuff. Like I'm going to literally teach you everything that I know. This the, because we're talking about that and talking about spirituality and Christianity. I just leave with my favorite favorite scripture, which is all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called to His purpose. So if you love the Lord, you are called. You know you are called to His purpose. Trust me when I tell you everything, even the thing that you think that you're going through right now, that's the worst possible thing. It will work for your good. All right. I, listen, I can't think of a better way to close than that. So, Nicole, I want to thank you for uh, dropping science on my uh, Practical Wealth listeners. And um, I think y'all need to rewind this to go back and take some notes because I got a page and I've been doing the interview. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Thank Yo. you for having me. This was fun. Yeah. I appreciate you. You're yeah. amazing. For all of you listeners out there who just like just got on to the podcast, Got on to Curtis's podcast. Hire him. <laughs> Call oh, him yeah. Hire him. Listen, you have a podcast. Say it Yeah, we forgot about the talk. Yeah, about yeah. yeah. With my podcast, the Better Than Success podcast, we just did episode number 125. We were rated number 11 by Entrepreneur Magazine, the top entre podcast for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and one of the top five podcasts for entrepreneurs by Control Magazine. So, yes, hit the subscribe button on my podcast as well. Yes, that's right. Listen, like, and share. Leave her a comment. Yeah, uh, yes. And so that being said, folks, thank you for uh, uh, listening uh, to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. And uh, stay tuned next week. We come out every uh, Thursday. And uh, for new, exciting stuff, got some great interviews lined up. And, folks, we are out. That is a wrap. And, folks, go out there and be prosperous. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.